Um, you know what I'm talking about now. You get in the trap of continuing to give, 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 in the hope that you'll end up getting the design work. Well, unfortunately, that works really badly. Episode 102. This is The Business of Architecture. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where each week I speak with a successful architect, designer, or consultant to discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's show is sponsored by BQE Software, the makers of ArchiOffice. ArchiOffice is the office and project management software built with the needs of architects in mind. And for a limited time, startup firms can get two free seats of ArchiOffice for a year. Go check it out at ArchiOffice.com. When you speak to the folks over at BQE Software, please mention this show. Because when you use ArchiOffice, you support Business of Architecture, which allows me to continue bringing you this content. Today's guest is Richard Petrie, the world's leading architect, marketing coach, and trainer. He leads the training over at the Architects Marketing Academy. You can read more about that at architectsmarketing.com. In this episode, you'll discover how to attract and land better clients, projects, and fees through the power of effective communication. And with that, here's today's show. Welcome, Richard, to Business of Architecture. Thanks, Hank. Nice to be back after about 18 months. Yeah. So, Richard, about 18 months ago, we did connect, and it was because I had architect Mona Quinn on my show, and only after she sent me an email saying that she was starting to have so much success using marketing principles. One of the first architects that I'd heard that was actually using real marketing principles to grow her firm. She was a brand new firm and she said, I have so much work right now, I I don't know what to do with it. And it was because she was working with her mysterious marketing coach and it turned out to be you. It was, yeah, that's right. So that was was about 18 months or two years ago. So uh, time has flown. Well, and she, I know she started off with a bang. I mean, we talked in those episodes that people can look up about how she got 150 leads in one weekend. Uh, which is pretty unheard of for architects to get that kind of uh, throughput. So I'm sure they can go catch that episode and and be filled in on the backstory there. But catch us up on, you know, Mona spent a lot of time setting up the marketing tools and systems that you helped her put into place. And, you know, what's happened since that initial success? What has she been up to, et cetera? Yeah, sure. So, you know, just the background was I I worked with Mona and, helped her develop a a system for getting appointments as an architect and like you say it worked very well and it continues to work very well Uh, and then that was the core of the system that that we we then moved across into the Architects Marketing Academy and and then we've started to help a lot more architects using the same system that that worked so well for her. So what she been up to, she's been, um, uh, well actually she's got a new client, me, Uh, I got her to do a needs and options review which is one of the big things uh, I I taught her to do. Uh, I actually hired her to do one for me, which is come in and do an assessment on um, a piece of land I had and give me some options on it and, 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 and charge me for it. So she charged me for it. So she did that correctly as well. There was no free work. She's not getting all her money from me. In fact, she's only getting a small slice. But she, I, I believe, and I may be speaking out of school, but she's increased her income by 300% from when we started, which is, is good news. So I know it's not all about money for architects. They like to be doing good work. But she is doing good work too. Um, she was flown over to Australia a couple of months ago to, um, to to do a special project over there, and she's been inducted onto a onto a board, uh, a heritage board in New Zealand, which she texted me oh, a couple of weeks ago saying she just you know she she sent a text her actually saying hey guess who's been inducted onto the special heritage board, and I text back going me, no <laughs> try again. <laughs> So anyway, she has been. So you know, that's we positioned her as an expert in the heritage side. I said you, sh- you need to niche, or you should niche, or at least give it a go. She did that, and now she's even in an official. She's now even been in. in, in a, she's in official positions within that thing. So she really is a um, not only talking about herself as being an expert, she's also uh, being seen as an expert by other people. So it's been a really good, um, interesting journey over the last uh, three years for her. Well, Richard, you just covered a lot of stuff there, and I want to unpack that a little bit. But the last thing you talked about was positioning Mona as an expert. I was watching a YouTube video today, amazing, about this uh, photographer from Central California. And 
you know, I don't know if you follow photography much, but it seems everyone nowadays is into photography because they have these new DSL cameras. Everyone You're not going to do the golf the waves breaking? What's that? Is it the is it the guy that does the waves breaking? Oh, no, but that's another one. That's that's a good idea. I remember yes. that one also. So tell yeah. me tell me the story about that and I'll share the story that I saw today on YouTube. Oh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, photography is photography and they're struggling because everybody's got a camera. I mean, my daughter's got a camera, which is a good camera. So everyone thinks they can do their own photos nowadays. So how do you sell photography at a premium? You know, it's kind of hard. But the way to continue to make money in any industry where you're feeling commoditized is you pick off a niche where there is money and you become an expert in that area. And then you become the go-to person. And this guy of the video I watched, he specialized in waves, oh, there's a special name for it, but where the wave breaks just on the sand, he specializes in just taking shots of waves as they're breaking on the sand. Talk about a niche. And the photos are beautiful. They are beautiful photos. But, you know, the, what an example of, you know, yeah, he's become world famous now. He goes to shows, be, and because he's an expert in a small thing, and, and you know, that's, that's how it works. So, unfortunately, I know architects want to be generalists, but if you're, if you, oops, decline. That's Mona Quinn calling now, actually. I'm going to have to decline her because we're on the She's trying to collect. She's trying to collect, Richard. She is. She is. So, so that was actually for them. Ah. <laughs> So um, anyway, uh, yeah, so, so what was your story? Well, it's, you mentioned that. That guy was from Hawaii. I do remember that now. And these incredible pictures of the sand being sucked up and then crashing on the beach. And this guy, that's all he did. So this guy, similar thing. He's talking to the interviewer and he's telling him, look, whenever I talk to young photographers, I tell them, you have to pick out a niche. So this yeah. particular guy, he does, he specializes in big landscape shots that include water and usually includes surfers or people in the foreground. So he sort of has this, and he kind of does these like interesting lighting. So he might do evening shots or morning shots, and that's his thing. So he said, I picked that out, and I just became really, really good at that. And so he said, that's what I suggest to the, the young photographers. Yep, yep. And there's no doubt, as an architect, you can be a generalist, and lots, lots of them are. So they do a bit of everything, some commercial, some residential, uh, which is fine. But if you ever find it's getting really tough and you need to be more sophisticated in your marketing, that's what that's what. You, if you come to me, that's what you have to do. You have to pick out certain, you have to pick out one, but you have to become famous for one thing. Doesn't mean you can't do other things, but you have to build a bit of a marketing message and a bit of a marketing model on one thing over here and maybe another thing over here, um, because people are attracted to experts and specialists. So that's a summary on that one. Well, you also mentioned, well, you also mentioned uh, not charging for free appointments uh, or, you know, the free appointment, the whole issue there. And you said that you had you had Mona Quinn set up to, to charge for those initial appointments. Unpack that a little bit for me. What do you what's what's oh, going on okay. with that? Well, that, that's been one of the biggest things working with architects over the past sort of two and a half years is is helping them craft a way to get paid, f getting away from the free site visits and doing the free design and free pre design work, I suppose. Some of them even do sketches and things like that. We, we've been stopping them doing that. Um, I, I don't mind people having a meeting, you know, having an initial meeting where you get on the phone and you have a chat with them for half an hour or 20 minutes. But the next step is to go into some sort of feasibility or some sort of um, review of their options, um, but get paid for it because the whole dynamics between you know, I mean, anyone who's listening to this who's done too much free work and they know who they are, you know who you are, um, you know what I'm talking about now. You get in the trap of continuing to give, 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 give in the hope that you'll end up getting the design work. Well, unfortunately, that works really badly. And the sooner you can get them into even a small, we call it an LCC or a low-cost consultation, you transition them very quickly from having a nice friendly chat and finding out about each other into a here's the next step, you know, if we're going to work together, here's the next step. We need to um, do some you know, research, do some analysis, do a review, work out what your options are. It's a small session I run. Um, it costs whatever, $150, $500. The, the record for charging for this thing with, with one of the guys on our program, the record is $12,000 for a sort of a no design, just feasibility. But most people are charging $750, something like that. Some are charging $1,500. But to go and do the research, and this is often the research that a lot of architects are, are currently doing for free. So if you're doing all that for free and then you've, 
I suggest you've got to work a way to stop doing it. For, for Join the Architects Marketing Academy. I'll show you how to do it. But, you know, even just, just come up with your own little package, your, your consultation package, so that you can move them into something formal and get paid for, for giving away your expertise, which is effectively you're doing. You, you studied seven or eight years to know this stuff. Just because it doesn't take you long to dispense, it doesn't take you long to give the person, just because you know it, doesn't mean it's not valuable and doesn't mean they shouldn't be paying for it. You know, it's easy to give out, too easy for you, um, but it's taken you eight years at least to know that stuff. So, you know, if I go to a lawyer or, or, an, or a brain surgeon or a, you know, they know the stuff I'm asking them questions on, but they charge me right from the first minute. So, so anyway, that's my big sermon is stop giving away stuff for free architects. Well, Richard, I have a lot of guests here on the business of architecture, but you're more than just a guest, more than just a buddy. In the interest of transparency, we actually are business, business buddies, business partners in the Architects Marketing Academy, where you're the, the top trainer, lead instructor, and coach. You want to just give people a little overview of what the Architects Marketing Academy is. They may have heard me mention it. Just let us know what, what's that all about. Yep. Well, you, you should know about it. Everybody on this business of architecture should be aware of it. <laughs> he says, you know, full disclosure, I'm in it. Um, but it's 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 a pr- place where you can go and, and basically get trained to uh, market and sell yourself. Um, I mean, architects get spend about eight years learning how to be a great architect and do great work and help people live better lives and better spaces. Um, they get about that much training and how to sell that that thing. So I believe you've got two jobs. Um, your first job is to be a marketer of architectural services. That's your number one job. Your second job is to be a great architect. But there is no second job without the first job, right? But no one gets, you know, the, the amount of training for architecture is that and the amount of training for selling architecture is that. So we provide, we, 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 we give you that. We give you more. We give you a chance to actually be able to, and uh, it's not about, you know, just marketing yourself and, and branding. It's about how to make the phone ring, get appointments, and, and get paid. So we run this program, uh, which which basically gives people tools, knowledge, resources. We give them a lot of stuff that they can just cut and paste and templates and we do newsletters. So it's the place to go if you want to grow your business or you want to um, increase your fees or if you want to uh, win better quality projects. Well, so just the architects break, break down for me the systematic process that we teach in the academy to give people an idea of kind of how that really works in terms of getting those inquiries and getting those appointments. Oh, right. Okay. So, uh, okay. So going right back to the start, unwrap it right back to the start. Um, we, we work on the basis that the best way to, um, get inquiries, get referrals and get customers is through marketing education or, or being, you know, being an educator in your market. And the reason for that is one, no one else's marketing education. To their market. So I'm t- when I say education on how to get a resource consent to build a commercial building, you know, in this area, or how to hire an architect, or you know, I- any problems that you think your target market has, you know, you provide resources and tools. Now, what that does is position you as an expert because whoever educates the market owns the market. You know, people who uh, salespeople have brochures, experts have books. So what we want to do is say, be an expert. Well, you're already an expert. Let's let's surround yourself with some of the expert tools and 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 provide educational resources. And immediately, as soon as you start being the teacher, you're, you you move up the pyramid. And you become seen as more expertly and, and worldly and an and, and expert. So we do a lot of that type of stuff. Um, we look to generate leads for people. We look to put automated um, follow up systems in place. We create um, LCCs or or a chance for people. Uh, a consultation that, that they can pay for, so it's an easy one to sell. Um, we show people how to trans- transition them right right up the ladder and getting them into a client. I don't know. There's there's lots of things, and it's really just about getting the phone to ring and getting clients, but and positioning yourself as an expert. I think um, it's hard. I, I, you know. So, so who who said it? Winston Churchill said. He said, "If you want me to talk, um, if you want me to, if you want me to speak for two hours, it takes me." Uh, two minutes to come and work out what I'm going to say. If you want me to speak for two minutes, it take me two hours to work out what I'm going to say. Yeah, that's so, good. Um, 
that's <laughs> that's why I'm rambling. Well, well, so what do you what do you say to commercial architects that say, ah, uh, you know, those kind of stuff that works really great for residential architects, but it do, it's not going to work for me. You know, we work with institutions and and uh, planning yeah. boards and stuff like that. No one works with an institution, right? No one works with an institution. You don't. You work with people. And, and, and really what, you know, marketing is about psychology of helping understand what people want and giving it to them. So that, that applies whether you're, you know, whether you're selling to people working in organizations or whether you're working with a husband and wife. Um, you need to understand what are their specific needs and wants, what are their specific problems, and then we reverse engineer a process to help people. You know, we help them early on before we ask for any money, we'll, we'll look to provide solutions to help them. And that's your doorway in is by being useful, by being helpful uh, and helping them solve their problems. So that applies to people who are working in big organizations who wear suits that scare you and, and who put out um, proposal documents and, and um, they comb their hair across here. Uh, it applies to them just as much as it applies to a husband or wife team. So what, what tips can you give for architects that are in that position where they're forced into maybe a proposal process where they have to give a proposal, they might have to go to a meeting, you know, how can they use some of these skills to, to be more convincing and to help apply correct marketing principles by giving, you know, basically giving the clients what they want? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll give you one tip. Um, one tip would be do not submit a proposal to you know to a big organisation if they if they're looking to get five or ten or twenty people to submit proposals, unless you have access to all the key decision makers and stakeholders. So h- how do you do that? Well, in a lot of cases, if you come in late, you can't. They, they'll just submit a document to you. In which case, I would say forget it. Your chances of winning one of those type of tenders. You know, it's just a lottery and, and they don't necessarily even pick the best person anyway. What you do, if you can get in, is you say, right, we, 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 we will only respond to this tender if we've had a chance to meet all the stakeholders so that we can do a, a proper diagnosis so that when we prescribe something to you, think about a doctor, you know, you treat yourself as a doctor. We, we can only prescribe a solution to your proposal if we've met all the stakeholders. And at the moment, we don't have enough information from this tender document. So... You'll find a lot of them, uh, some of them will go, no, you can't, we're already, in which case it's too late anyway. Walk away, find another deal where you're in early. But if they do let you, then you've got a chance to go in and do a proper diagnosis on each of the stakeholders, find out what they each need and find out how, how some of that, some of that will be in conflict. Like some person in department A will want something that doesn't fit with person in department B. Well, you need to know that before you can do a proposal. So that's why you do it. It's good for you and it's good for them. And if you, if you don't get that opportunity, then, you know, why, why bother? Richard, let's see, in February, we had a live event, which was the first live event that we held in the Architects Marketing Academy. We flew everyone to, well, they flew themselves to Las Vegas. We flew you up here to, to Las Vegas, right? We, we rented a, a penthouse over there in the Mandalay Bay and had a good time with, I think it was 26 architects from across the U.S. And, and Andrew Donaldson joined us all the way from Australia. That's <laughs> right. So yeah, when, when we did there, have a wife. What's that? I was going to say he. I don't know if you realize, but his wife is an air hostess for Qantas or someone. So he does fly cheap. <laughs> very nice, very nice. He's <laughs> he's a he was a crack up too. These guys, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Well, give us give oh, us. Man. What were you teaching there? Let's talk a little bit about what we did there in Vegas. Yeah. And we've been talking a lot lately about the, the Petri method. So give us an idea what exactly is the Petri method. Yeah, right. Well, the Petri method wasn't named by me. It was named by my business partners. So it was called called some other things. But what we teach in the Architects Marketing Academy is marketing and generating leads and getting appointments and, 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 cl- and converting those appointments. What we taught in Vegas was more face-to-face communication skills. So you could say sales skills, but it's not so much sales skills, it's more um, communication skills. So we, we talked about handling objections and there's you know, the common ones that architects get. We talked about talking to your clients in a different language uh, and the language is sort of clientology or buyer language. Um, the way the way they're thinking, and, and it's kind of, uh, this always staggers me, and, and I do it too sometimes. But when we're selling things, we tend to talk 
um, from a different perspective as to when we're buying. And the irony is we're buying so much, we should be great at talking like a buyer, but we're not. There's a switch. We can talk about this in a minute, but there's a switch that flips when we're selling stuff that, that all of a sudden we, we, we talk differently. Um, we covered fast track pitches on how to communicate your value uh, and your benefits very quickly. Um, we talked about questions to ask. Um, so the, the, they were more face-to-face -face selling. Ah, I, I, I'm right to use the word selling skills because I know architects have a bit of a phobia about that word, but, but it is more communication skills. We're all trying to help the other person, so we're going to be better at communicating. So you talked about uh, the first thing you mentioned there was um, the train just <laughs> objections. I think, yeah, benefits. Well, you, you you mentioned that talking about the the buyer's language, right? The the buyer's language, and that a, a flip switches in our heads. You kind of got into that a little bit, but could you explain and give examples of what you mean by that to help our listeners yeah. understand? Yeah, sure. Okay, so. The irony is, if I look at myself even today, I've probably gone out and, and spent three or four hundred dollars on things, buying things. So when I'm buying things, have a think about what I'm, you know, I did, I'm renovating a house, so um, I'm putting in a shower and there's a dome for the shower. And I'm thinking when I'm buying the dome, right, I'm thinking, all right, it's the dome, what it does is stop the, um, the moisture creating steam and the room getting all sweaty and... You know, I'm thinking this dome will stop the mist and stop the steam, which means I won't have to come in and paint this roof every two years because it's getting moldy because of all the moisture in the air. I'm not going to have to do that. So I'm going to spend $200 because it's going to save me time and trouble later on and protect the house. Right. When I'm in there buying the dome, I've got a salesperson pointing out the features this one's got this thing, you know, this one's, you know, good for this and da, da, da. But they're talking about the features like they're selling a car, you know, it's got earbags and it's got this and that. And that. I'm not interested in any of that, right? All I'm interested in is how it's going to affect me. And this person, all, who, he was interested in doing selling, was telling me about the features. Now, to bring this back to an architect, you know, I, I'm no architect, so I don't know, but if I look at websites, I see things like, you know, I'm BIM and I'm Passive House and I'm, um, you know, um, I belong to this board. and you know, It's all stuff about them. Buyer language is how, so the two different ends. So one is, a, let's just go FAB, right? FAB. Feature is what the thing is. Okay, so what the thing is. BIM, that's what it is. The advantage is what it does. Now, what is, I'm going to fall into the trap here because I'm going to start talking about BIM and I'm not, not quite. So you do 3D drawings before you do anything. You know, what it's a process which you have to create 3D drawings and stuff like that. The ultimate side is the benefit and the benefit is how it affects someone's life. And at the end of the day as a buyer, that's the only bit I'm really interested in, right? Is that final piece. How does it affect my life? That's called the benefit. Okay, so... I don't know, how does it affect my life? If, if, if an architect is talking to me, they need to be talking about how, what we're going to do, would it be useful to see your design, see your house before we actually commit to anything and before we spend big money doing stuff? Would that be useful to you, Mr. Petrie? Of course. Yes, it would. Because a lot of architects won't. They'll, they'll, they'll come up with sketches on paper, but what we've found in the past is that that causes problems because the buyer, the homeowner, doesn't really understand. And when they when they see it being built, they go, oh, I was thinking something else. No. So that's the benefit is you get to save money, you get to see it, you get to know you've got the right thing. It's not about BIM, you know. It's not about BIM. It's not about the 3D drawings. It's about how it's going to affect me. That's probably a terrible explanation. But the, but the short form is feature, advantage, benefit. Feature is logical. Benefit is emotional and how it's going to affect me. And, and if, if architects can spend more time talking about the consequences of some of these things, then what they do is they, they, they start to speak more emotionally and, and they start having deeper conversations about more interesting things to buyers. If you're just going to list off features of what you're doing, uh, we don't care. We, our eyes start to glaze over and you wonder why we ended up hiring someone down the road who you think is not as good as you, but maybe they were better at speaking at this side of the equation. So features, advantages, benefits, the money's in the benefit side, not the feature side. 
Well, I remember that in Vegas, we had the architects go through this process of identifying, the, you know, talking about their features, translating them into advantages, and then turning those into benefits, which, which are ultimately outcomes. And I remember uh, OSHA, when she did hers, I mean, everyone's draw basically dropped. And she got, I think she yep. got uh, applause when people heard the way that she reframed it using that FAB framework. There is a video that people can watch uh, and no charge. We've put up a video somewhere, so I don't know if, if 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 you can put a link under this this video here where you can watch that training. And it, it actually has OSHA in it um, doing her example, um, which is well worth seeing. So if you ever have trouble communicating with people, watch this. I think it's about a twelve minute training video on benefit busting. Um, watch, please watch that. Um, uh, there are you know you can go into deeper into it, but but that twelve minute video will get you going and down the right path and um, you, you must watch it. If you're watching this this thing here today, you must go and watch that 12 minute training video. Absolutely. And you can find that if you're listening to this on iTunes or something, just search for Business of Architecture Richard Petrie and look for episode 102. That's 102. I'll have the link in the show notes to that. We recorded all of the training that we did in Vegas uh, and that's actually a for sale product, but we did pull out this particular section so you can actually get the best part of that FAB training, you know, absolutely free. Go check it out. I think it's going to be a lot of value to you. And uh, that's just an exchange for your email address. And plus, you'll, you'll get access to the Architects Marketing email list, which is we're always sending out a lot of good information about uh, marketing and communication and influence for architects. Yeah, definitely. And, and a lot of people, you know, at the Architects at this Vegas thing said, the, the stuff around benefits was one of the most eye-opening things they'd they'd come across because it changed every, it changed the way they thought. So, um, you know, like I say, it's it's free. You can go and watch it. So, so definitely go and do that. Yeah, if you want to get that, go ahead. Go to Business of Architecture forward slash F A B. So once again, that's Business of Architecture forward slash F A B. That'll take you to the page where you can get access to that training. And both Richard and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. If you enjoyed today's show, please go to iTunes and leave a review. There are two reasons to do this. First, it encourages me to continue making free content for you to run a fulfilling and profitable practice. And secondly, it allows others to find this content inside of iTunes so that they can benefit as well. For free resources for running an architecture practice, that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the join button to unlock your account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, boost profitability, start a firm, and much more. Until next week, this has been the Business of Architecture. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, do it anyway.